Alright, tutorial two, what we're going to talk about is the commands and subsystems today. So, subsystem, uh, subsystems have to go by a singleton design, meaning that there are only one copy of each subsystem existing in the class when it's referenced. So what we do is that we have one instance of the class program, meaning that we use a get instance method. And what it does is every time you construct it, you just call the get instance, and that means it will reference that copy of the subsystem that we have. Um, so, and then the constructors are private, so that the instance, the get instance checks if an instance has already been created, and if it has, it just returns that already created one. Otherwise, it calls the private constructor that only itself can call. Yep. And subsystems should never be duplicated because that just causes confusion in the program. You wouldn't want to have two victors that tried to be initialized on the same port. But generally, subsystems, they group hardware together, such as Victor's relay and gyros. Victor's are like speed controllers that um, control the input of voltage to motors, and relays are little switches that turn things on and off, forward and backwards. And low level control bio methods. The subsystems are really dumb. They're not supposed to have any logic structure in it. So all the high level, structure, uh, high level logic should be put in commands. So subsystem commands should just simply reference the hardware and return values. So what's an example? Let's look at an example of a subsystem. Good idea. So this is an example uh, sorry, of the inner This is the... Oh, we might not have one though. Oh, uh, you go to iShooter, that's fine. Yeah. Just go to the one on the right of that. Yeah, this, this is the same. Yeah. All right, so this is an iShooter. The, this is a subsystem interface. What we do is we interface it. We'll talk about it later. But generally, what we do is uh, so look at the example of these commands. It's methods inside it. Now that none of them have any logic, it's simply like set the angle of the shooter, set the angle of the shooter, uh, get the angle, or set the shooter speed. It's just simple like value checking, just initializing the hardware, hardware with numbers. So the real difference is that subsystems don't know why they're being told to do things, where commands have a clear purpose in the order and execution of their uh, of the program. Yes. So commands they give high level control of subsystem, they're the brains of the program, so what they'll do is they'll take the subsystem and tell it what to do. Um, and so commands are smart. Important. Important that you don't confuse these two, and you keep the commands like containing all the logic. So an example of that is <coughs> this drive forward. So if you want the robot drive forward, you'll have to have the drive train to write in the beginning, it requires the subsystem to drive train. This is a little detail, but what they do is requires meaning if the subsystem is not in use, then we can use it. Otherwise, we'll just take it, depending on the situation. So the command has a smart uh, logic. So every time it uh, runs, it drives forward for a certain amount of time. We'll check the time and the start time and the drive time. So the logic makes sense that it can drive for a certain amount of time. All right. And then next up, we've got uh, we have the relationship between commands and subsystems, and this is really the bread and butter of um, command-based structure. This is what makes command-based structure special. Uh, one way to think that subsystems are bossed around by commands, that is that commands can have multiple subsystems and uh, can, can tell them all what to do in a certain order. So for the drive forward command that we just saw, uh, it bosses around the drive train subsystem and says, okay, drive use this method that you've declared take drive and drive forward at this speed. And um, again, the subsystem doesn't really know why it's being told to do that, it's just being told to. And that's what makes it kind of dumb, it makes it inert. Uh, one, one important thing is that uh, subsystems can only have one command running them. So you can't have two competing commands for one subsystem. For instance, if there was a, if there was a command drive forward like you just see, and then there is another command turn right. You couldn't have them both run at the same time because they'd be conflicting. One would be telling the drive, the drive train to drive forward, and the other is telling us to turn right. Obviously, that's going to have a conflict, so the way command based robot structure works is that it uh, one dominates the other, one trumps the other. So, whichever one, usually it's whichever one's called latest, is the one that gets the subsystem. However, you can also say, you can also make one subsystem, one command, I'm sorry, one command trump the other and say, 
no matter what, this command dominates the subsystem. Um, well, what's the order that they're called in? How does that work? So, if uh, let's say at the beginning of the program you have an autonomous command that's drive forward, and then and it drive, the robot drives forward just fine, and then the teleop starts, and you ask the drivetrain to start driving with joysticks rather than just driving forward dumbly. Uh, so what, what the program's going to do is it's going to say, oh, well, right now this subsystem drivetrain is already being occupied by uh, drive forward. But it says, oh, it, but it says that it's passive. It doesn't mind if something else comes in and bosses and, and takes over. So since it's interruptible, and that's something that you can define in the program, drive with joysticks will now take uh, the drivetrain subsystem and drive forward will stop executing. It'll call the end method. Um, and that's an important thing to realize uh, just how that, that relationship works where a command can have many subsystems. So you could have a command that shoots and picks up and drives all at the same time and it'd be totally fine. But you can't have a subsystem that's being told to do by two different commands. Uh, let's see. We'll talk about interfacing now. Uh, we've already shown you an example of an interface. Uh, the reason that it's relevant is because it's an excellent way to separate the logic of commands and uh, subsystems further. So I'm going to show you what, uh, let's see, what's next yeah. time? One more. One more. Yeah. All right. So this is the interface iShooter. Uh, and so iShooter is meant to be implemented by a, basically a shooter class. And what, what this lets us do is define what methods a shooter subsystem needs to operate. So as a programmer, when you go into this, you say, OK, what do I need to control the subsystem effectively? Obviously, you need to be able to run the shooter. So you have run shooter, and it takes a parameter double speed. So what speed do you want the shooter to run at? You want it to be 50%, 100%. Um, you also said, OK, if, if, you can architect, if you can articulate the shooter, you need a set angle, which actually would set the angle of the shooter, you know, and if, uh, when zero degrees is parallel to the ground. Um, we also said, OK, well, it's a good thing to know when the shooter spun up. So how about a get shooter speed? And what that's going to return is a double. And uh, we can use that in commands to say when the shooter is ready to be ready to have a frisbee put into it. Uh, but as you can see, these are just declarations of the methods. If you're not familiar with interfacing, interfacings don't contain any of the actual logic. It's just what you need, what you foresee needing in that logic. So what this lets you do is you can say uh, in a command, I think this command. Yeah, OK, so in the command, it requires drivetrain, which isn't, which isn't really a drivetrain. It's an interface for a drivetrain. And so it can only call the methods that we've defined for a drivetrain, in this case, uh, tank drive. Is, is the uh, interfaced method. So if there was something that you needed to do that you don't have the, the methods available to, you'd have to add it to the interface to complete that implementation, or I should say implementation, to complete that functionality. So um, we're doing this all in Java, and interfaces are like, when you write an English paper, it's like the outline before you start writing the paper. Exactly, it's like the pre-writing. It's really helpful because you can have multiple implementations between, like, I could write one and Paul could write one, and we could test mine, and it could be really slow and laggy, and then you just swap in Paul's with one line of code, and his could work fine. And so it's really good practice to interface, and this is a place where it works real well in our experience. All right, let's see. Finally, I want to talk about command base. Um, just saw a little bit of command base, but, and I'll go over it in a second. But um, the key features of command base is that it owns references to all the subsystems. And in our case, it actually owns references to all the uh, interfaces rather than the direct subsystems. But those end up getting filled by actual implementations. All commands that you write, for instance, drive forward, like we've shown you a few times now, extend command base. And what this does is it gives them access. It gives them scope to, these, to the references that it has. So uh, drive forward, when it extends command base, it now also owns the variable drivetrain, which is defined in command base. Uh, in addition, subsystems are all initialized in command base. It's a good practice to have them all initialized in one place so you don't have 
sub sub subsystems trying to be initialized in multiple places and at diff different times. Um, so let's take a look at that real quick. Do you know which tab it is? It's one to the right. To the right. Yeah. So, the command, command base actually extends command. That's not super pertinent, um, but it's something to know. Also, command base owns is a, a reference to the OI. Again, it's not super important, but um, you can use that in some parts. And then this is the real, the real interesting stuff. So you see how it has a reference to the, a reference to all the interfaces: drive train, shooter, gatherer, and frisbee pusher. That lets it so that anything that extends it now can call those because they're public, so they can or they're protected, so they can be inherited. Um, and then in the init function of this, which is called in the main robot class, so the entry point calls command based on init, which then calls uh, initialize all this stuff, which the get instance like we were talking about, that's what constructs it, constructs it. And right now the other ones are commented out, but that's just because we don't have the actual hardware yet to test them. But um, if, as soon as they're ready, you could just uncomment those and that would work fine. Uh, so again, Input drivetrain is the implementation of the interface I drivetrain. And uh, so you see above it, we had another one, proto drivetrain, which I wrote, and then somebody else wrote input drivetrain. It works better. Just swapped it in and filled the variable with that. Uh, I think that just about covers command base. Yep. So, uh, well, thanks for listening, guys. And uh, Paul, do you have anything to add? Nope. Sounds good to me. All right. Well, uh, we'll record another one sometime, but I appreciate you guys tuning in and have a good one.